Good morning, it's me, Joey, your Caribou Weather Dude here with some more bad news. Are you ready for another bad news show? Okay, well, we got another major solar flare that's kicked off from the sun this morning. I mean, this one's dwarfing the one that happened the other day, the one that we weren't sure if it was going to hit Earth or not, you know. So we got now two big coronal mass ejections heading towards the Earth. Which is why we're here today to talk about how much rain and snow BC will get. Because <laughs> maybe if we miss the show in BC, at least, uh, I don't know, maybe we have the comfort that civilization could collapse. You know, we could always hope for that. Anyways, uh, this is the bad news show. Let's go. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything could happen. Get on. Wow. I'll watch the video later. Not finance, not strategy, not technology. It is teamwork that remains the ultimate competitive advantage, both because it is so powerful and so rare. If you could get all of the people in an organization rowing in the same direction, you could dominate any industry in any market against any competition at any time. That's from the Wildfires, Floods, and Chaos Communications podcast. Brand new season is up. They are the sponsors of the show right now. So Tim is an information officer. It's one of the things he does. He's a communication specialist, and their podcast is absolutely interesting about all about the kinds of things that happen during wildfires that a communications officer and a team like that might have to encounter. So communicationspodcast.ca. Please do not miss a chance to go see this podcast for yourself. Okay, let's go to the show. Seems to be some issues going on with Wendy today again. I don't know what's up with this app. It's been awesome for so many years, but we'll uh, we'll see what we can do here. But their satellite feed is back up at least, so that's encouraging, right? If they're having more troubles, at least they seem to be fixing them. So we got good satellite images today, even though we don't have uh, ISO bars of pressure. That'd be really nice to see. But anyways, this is the next new storm that we are looking at coming off the coast of Russia. You can see it's going to be a very powerful storm. It's going to really sink in. It looks like though it's going to head more into the Arctic, more towards Alaska proper. So this one's giving us a little bit of a break. And then we got this new guy here in BC coming in. So it's going to be sending lots of precipitation towards us. Nothing major is going on. This is a weaker storm than we've had, but it will continue with the early season snow trend that we've had. So been a lot of snow falling already in the mountains, even here in Wells to start October. We got mountains that are pretty much covered on the tops, right? And not not melting off very fast. Maybe the sunshine today will put a bit of a dent into some of that snow that's on the mountains. But uh, no, some of it's here to stay. So we got an early start to the snow season. And another big story that's been going on is this Nunavut Low, which you can see here still swirling around up there. It looks like today we don't have the kinds of wind warnings, the precip warnings that we've been seeing up through Nunavut. Uh, some of the areas in northern Manitoba getting hit pretty hard. Some of these areas up along the very northern top of typical Beck getting hit very hard. So it looks like for you mostly, the show is starting to resolve itself. So that must be nice. Maybe you will get an excellent Northern Lights show. Of course, tonight on the channel, we have the podcast. <clears throat> oh man, I'm like sick from children. Tonight on the show, we have the podcast and that includes often people from the Weather Center in Manitoba, often Justin, sometimes Mike, and we also get Mark Engels, meteorologist Mark Engels, who's part of Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers. So I like showing the stuff of the people I work with, right? Because it, you know, maybe some of you are in Manitoba and you'd be like, I've never heard of the Weather Center in Manitoba on Facebook. And you can go check it out. So, uh, Justin woke up to the news that another huge solar flare was launched from the sun earlier this morning, shortly after 7 a.m. It's X9.05 solar flare, strongest flare so far during the solar cycle, surpassing May's event, which was just an X8.7 rating, only 8.7. This is the 15th most intense solar flare ever recorded. Looking at the latest LASCO data, it does appear that a full halo CME coronal mass ejection was launched from the sun directed at Earth. This means the northern lights are possible Saturday night. Looking at weather forecasts for southern Manitoba Saturday night, well, we know they're possible tonight and Friday as well because of the last flare before that. Uh, the big question is, do we get a break in the clouds? And this one, if you can see, it's like more or less almost in the center of the sun as it faces towards us. So this is a, gives us a really high chance that we're going to see something of this guy. And, uh, oh, there's a big circle in your sun. Look out. And uh, what I don't understand what the big circle's about. But here's some big circles. X-class X class flare occurred and reached X9.0. That's pretty crazy. Solar flares this magnitude can be impulsive, quick to rise and decrease, lasting some minutes or last a few hours. 
immediate water area. Stronger degradation of signal loss and high frequency communication can be expected over much sunlight side of the earth. Users of HF radio signals may experience loss of contact or major disruptions for a number of minutes to a couple hours in the affected areas. Come on, Flare! Defeat civilization! Now we'll head over to Mark Engels, meteorologist Mark Engels, one of the moderators of Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers, and one of the... Uh, I consider Mark to be, because he's a very good meteorologist, I consider him to be um, what you would call a peer review check on myself. And this is how actual science works in the real life, right? So you develop a hypothesis, you take your thesis, you develop it further, you come to a conclusion, then you put it through to a, a board of your peers and different scientists in the stuff who will look at it and try to poke holes in it or decide if you have met the stringent requirements to have your work be seen as credible right so you know there's a whole process to science that's very important this peer review so it's really important that that anybody who's saying things with knowledge has someone that's sort of looking there in the background saying well you know but anyway so mark when he posted this yesterday on weather watchers i, I made a funny comment i said uh, i did not even hit the laugh emoticon and why would that be because before mark wrote this awesome article which we'll look at in a second here he wrote this one that says major solar flare but significant aurora display not expected and that's what some of the people were saying yesterday still and uh, this is what happens in weather and in science, a bunch of information goes out and everyone looks at it and says, okay, that sounds reasonable. And then someone goes, wait, we got more information now. And then they look at that information and say, well, as of, actually, as a matter of fact, maybe uh, maybe everyone's wrong. It's actually coming. Uh, in fact, there's more flares coming. So, you know, don't, don't look at the fact that Mark was wrong the first time. Look at the fact he corrected himself. It's the willingness to be wrong that will make you good at science, right? It's not the willing. You can't, if you just want to be right all the time, then what happens is uh, you lie or you stretch truth or you fill in f fake facts to activity peaking Friday. KP index is seven possible. A lower lover shouldn't buy non-refundable tickets for the hype train, however. The peak activity coming during the daytime on Friday in North America. The other en route coronal mass ejections forecast to strike Thursday night with a KP index of 6. They say Friday's event could see KP6 values linger into Friday night. Other forecasts, such as those made available by NASA, indicate the KP index may only top out at 4 to 6 range. Additionally, NASA predicts the activity won't reach Earth until Friday night. So a lot of uncertainty. And, you know, this sort of goes back to what I was saying to these guys is that uh, I've learned to not take northern lights forecasting you know with anything more than a grain of salt because uh, no one really knows and you know what i've seen being a guy who stands outside at night and looks at the sky i do most nights take a look at the sky is i've seen many nights where they say well it's not going to be a very good show and i go out there and go what the heck wow and then i've had other nights where they're like like wow it's going to be a crazy show and then i get out there and uh I'm like, where is it? So the Northern Lights are extremely fickle that way, right? So we'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens. Earlier forecast indicated the bulk of the erupted plasma was not aimed at planet Earth. Uh, we're not, we were not in the direct path of this major. Uh, so, but Tuesday's flare is the strongest since May and the second strongest so far in the solar cycle. In May, a KP index of 9 was achieved during the strongest geomagnetic storm since 1989. KP9 is the highest value possible. So we may have one that's even stronger than the one we just had in May, right? That was a great one, I think May 9th or something like that. If I do recall, Northern Lights were reported as far south as Puerto Rico. And the 1989 event that caused widespread power outages was in Quebec. So that was a, a very intense storm, the one that happened in Quebec in 1989. And I recall going out and watching the northern lights at that time i was 10 years old you know and that's these are things that my mom and i would do often in fact uh same with the per side meteor shower we'd go out and sit there and watch i was like that with thunderstorms my whole life i've been a guy just a, a, a single mom who has an only child and they live in a bungalow in the swamps and forests of the canadian shield what do you think we do for fun 
Back in the 80s, nothing was fucking fun. Problem is, Mark's also talking about the Pacific Northwest forecast Thursday night. Strong low pressure system approaching British Columbia Thursday night. Widespread cloud in the lower mainland, Vancouver Island, coastal areas of the province. I think a lot of that's going to come in the interior as well. North of Blue River, other areas north of Quesnel. Clouds are expected to part of the Olympic Peninsula along I-5 corridor through Washington. Okanagan can expect mainly clear skies, but you know we'll see about that. Because the storm will be moving into the region, lower mainland and Victoria areas will have their best chance of favorable skies earlier in the evening you know and it's not looking much better for friday night right looking like a lot of cloud cover so we can have another look here and this is the number of sunspots this is really interesting number of sunspots observed uh compared to forecast from 2006 to today so we right now we're at the very height of this uh, cycle and look we got some a lot of activity going on man like this is pretty intense intense pretty interesting here on the channel we like facts we do not care about what seems to make sense what feels like it would make sense what you feel it's not about what you feel and so we got a guy on here that's sounds like a climate change denier who was telling me yesterday obviously i need to research into solar flares and their effect on earth and this and that okay well solar flares do not cause heat waves okay they do not just to keep it in perspective, careful measurements suggest the solar activity does in fact warm the Earth by a tenth of a degree, 0.1 Celsius, okay? So this is not why climate change is happening. And then the fact that, that climate change was happening before this spike of flares that Mark just showed, climate change was happening in 2009, it was happening in 2010, it was happening in 2011, it wasn't like... In 2014, 15, it wasn't like suddenly we had some warm years here and we didn't have warm years here. Oh, look, and then we got 2017, 18, you know, some of the warmest years in BC when we had all the big fires. Look at that, no solar flares. So there's no correlation between solar flares and the temperature in the goddamn planet. If the Carrington event of 1859 were to happen today, it would cause like $3 trillion in damage, some estimates say. Come on, flares, do something. I'm like poking the flares of the stick. Okay, tonight's Aurora forecast looking pretty good. Looking pretty good, okay? And same with tomorrow night as well. So we got two nights on the row that uh, look like pretty active Aurora events coming towards us. Basically, a whole bunch of conflicting information that doesn't exactly see for sure what's going to happen well should some say that it will be less lights tonight but more friday well then nasa just said it could be lights all night so it's, you're gonna have to go out and look at the sky man however unfortunately we got a lot of a lot of cloudy kind of skies happening and look at this canada is had for the most part i mean there's some ridging there on both east and west coast temporarily next week sort of starting but and then in the prairies a little bit of ridging there so we do get i get a bit of a moment here where you can see that some warmer air may slip up into places but no you look at an alberta clippers form it's rushing across and by the time it gets into the east it will have formed a real nice looking storm there right here's our nunavut low right now 981 still fairly deep we got our next storm out there in the coast here. It's not too bad. We got our next guy up there forming off the coast of Russia. 953 turning very, very low. Very, very low. Our guy at 990 in the coast, he's not really not really able to break in much. And you can see that next Alberta Clipper forming up there Saturday morning and racing off. That's going to, on the backside of it, bring some pretty good precipitation into Saskatchewan, then into Manitoba. Maybe some snow on the north, it looks like, and some rain on the south. Going to have some thunderstorms moving across through Lake Superior as we come into Sunday morning. We talked about this last episode. Here's that next storm up on the Pacific Coast, sitting at 980, pretty deep, and sending some waves of moisture and precipitation at the province, but not really directly striking us. But you can see there as we come into next week, we got that next ribbon of, of weather. So I was mentioning Mark and Justin, um, Manitoba Weather Center and Ingalls WX. So we will be live here on the channel tonight. I'm not sure if either of those guys will be on or not. Uh, it's always kind of a, a crapshoot as to who's available and who's not. I think we're going to have my friend Ronnie Grigg, though, on. And Ronnie and I used to work in the downtown east side together. Um, many of you don't know, but I, I did spend a stint in the city. I went down the city and I spent a stint. And I worked for Portland Hotel Society. Uh, one of the places I worked at was a safe injection site. I became very good friends with Ronnie. Ronnie was one of my, my closer friends down there. One of the few people that I really have kept in touch with over the years since I've left the job. And came up to Wells. I bought the lodge here in 2009. But I was part of all that went down. So Ronnie went 
to New York last week and for the Emmys because there was a documentary called Love in the Time of Fentanyl that shows all the lives Ronnie and them have saved, right? So uh, kind of an emotional watch for me last night to check to watch that, but uh, very good. So we'll be talking to Ronnie tonight. Tune in the, t- the channel here at uh, about 6.30 time, uh, Pacific time and see maybe Justin from Antobo Weather Center will be on. Maybe Mark Ingalls, meteorologist, will be back on this week. Often is. If not, we'll still have Brandon Houck. Uh, another weather expert and here's that model run again that alberta clipper out in ontario out and across bam wave after wave kind of coming to bc nothing too major nothing crazy nothing all that crazy you know you may get some of that spill inland at times certainly along the coast vancouver island is going to take a pretty good uh smashing up along the coast mountains going to get slammed pretty good with some of this precip maybe the caribou takes a little on friday we're not looking at a major precip event in bc no not really and we're gonna probably keep staying around i mean we had some cooler temperatures right now just unsettled enough that it's probably gonna give us more cloud than we'd really like to to see in coming inland right kind of a gloomy sort of look for us here's just looking at our cloud cover uh thursday friday total percent cloud cover uh not looking really good not really good. lots of uh lots of this is in the 80 to 100 percent category uh well there's a break there hey buddy on uh, cash creek look up you might see northern lights for for uh oh a minute and uh oh there's a break on saturday uh it's gone uh southern interior look at that a break on saturday afternoon maybe it'll stick around till night no 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 it won't uh maybe the compete no no never nobody gets a fucking view of this oh look at that sunday morning Maybe if you're up early Sunday morning in northern BC, you'll get a break from the clouds. Now, this will change by then. There'll be clouds there too, probably. Oh, that looks okay. So, Sunday morning, maybe your best Aurora chances in the PC here in BC. Ah, it's, we're really getting skunked out of this one, man. I don't feel too bad. It's not like anyone in Canada is getting great northern lights viewing. You know, most of the prairies through the weekend sitting under decks of cloud maybe northwest territories gets a little bit of a break there sure uh, but no most of canada is sitting pretty cloudy through the weekend so if anyone actually does get a good northern light show they're gonna be really lucky well that's more or less the show for today uh, lots of northern light activity out there maybe i'll shut down civilization come on and uh uh <sighs> kind of a bland nasty sort of weekend unless you're on the coast then it's gonna be not so bland just nasty and uh, coast mountains some snow yeah but just not awesome stuff man sorry awesome northern light show you're gonna get screwed out of it i think for a lot of you and that's uh how she goes here in wells especially up in the mountains here you know we get a clear night at this time of year <laughs> like wow a clear night that's incredible and how many times i've seen clear nights that were foggy and misty and you know even then you couldn't get a great view to the stars because the the surface conditions weren't great even if the sky was so that's how she goes okay anyways it's that time of the show where we have a look so this here is my patreon you can see right here 85 total 72 paid 500 dollars a month is my budget that's my income then you add uh, sponsor. If you want to be a sponsor, uh, I know my last sponsor is very happy because some of these videos will be getting 20,000 views. Awesome. So join the Patreon. Be people like my friend Kelly Green. And Kelly, by the way, I totally biffed on sending you that song yesterday. That will come today. So uh, Kelly, he's making a video project himself. So thanks for the support. Uh, support. Kelly, really appreciate you helping me keep going here on the channel. As for everybody else, make sure you tune into the Comedy Meteorological Report tonight, the podcast with myself and the crew. Comedy plus meteorology equals meteorology. Anyways, that's the show for today. Hit like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, help me grow the channel, man. Okay, that's the show. Bye now.